Hey guys, uh, I'm just going to go through my collection really quick. Um, over the next couple days, just shelf by shelf, little by little. And I'm just going to point out some of my favorite films in here. I'm not going to go through all of them, but maybe it'll be interesting to some of you who were in quarantine and bored like myself. So, um, starting with this one, this was my first Blu-ray that I ever got. This is the Werner Herzog collection from Shout Factory. Uh, I had resisted Blu-ray for the longest time and then I inherited a Blu-ray player and this was the first one I ever got because uh, at the time I had Nosferatu the Vampire which is probably my favorite vampire movie but not my favorite Herzog movie. My favorite Herzog would um, either be Fitzgeraldo or The Enigma of Caspar Hauser. And I just thought it would be better to get both of these sets. I mean, the set just for both of those, but then everything else because all of his great films are in the set. So uh, if you guys haven't seen Fitzgeraldo, I highly recommend it. It's a really harrowing um, movie where... Um, I recommend watching the documentary The Burden of Dreams after because you really get a good sense of how life can imitate art and um, all the madness that went into making the movie. And I feel like the two of them complement each other really well and give you kind of a good idea of who Werner Herzog is and what makes him so special. Uh, the Enigma of Caspar Hauser is another one that's really crazy um, that you guys should see if you haven't. I'm going to move on, though. Um, these are my two Kino Lorber films right here. I don't have very many. I just have these two. But um, this one is a favorite of mine. This is The Ring of Bright Water. It is probably the best animal movie that I've ever seen. Um, you know, caution for animal lovers, you know, which I'm an animal lover, of course. Um, but this movie is very sad and a little bit bleak, you know, but it's also very heartwarming and, um, just really touches me. And one of those movies that I put on when I'm in good of a, in need of a good cry, you know. But the cover is adorable because otters are the most amazing animals on the planet, in my opinion. I love them. Um, these are my Twilight Time releases. These, these four. Uh, when the Wind Blows, Pretty Poison, Bedazzled, and Will Success Spoil Rock Hunter. I don't have very many of them because Twilight Time... They are limited, and I never get them in time. Um, but all four of those are pretty awesome. So uh, this one, When the Wind Blows, I kind of got lucky on this one. I managed to find it when it was out of print for a good price, but now uh, Severn is releasing this one. And if you guys don't have this one, definitely get the Severn release when they put it out because... It is a great animated movie. Also very depressing. So, um, yeah, I, I have a thing for really sad movies that make you feel like shit. Um, they're my favorite. And then going along. Then I have my... See, my, my order is very strange. Uh, it makes sense to me and me alone. Uh, but I mainly have them by... At least my Blu-rays I have by label. Uh, these are my two Arrow Academies right here. Cinema Paradiso and Images. I recommend both of these. Uh, this is the only ones I have. But I have more Arrow videos. I'll get down. I'll get to those some other day. But then I go into Criterion. These are ordered by spine number. And I have a good chunk of them. I have about probably... I would say I have about an eighth of the Criterion Collection, which is pretty crazy. Um, most of my Blu-rays are Criterion. I just started getting in the habit of catching those sales, and I save up for them. But uh, I'm going to point out this one. 
This is All That Heaven Allows. It's a film by Douglas Sirk. Um, I love this movie. This is one of John Waters' favorite movies, so if you really like John Waters, uh, this is nothing like any of John Waters' films, but if you see this film, you may kind of see some of its influence on him a little if you dig deep enough. But um, what I really like about this movie is it's a 1950s melodrama but it has the colors of an Italian horror film. It's very vibrant and very, um, very visual and moody. And it didn't have to be because most people in 1955 were going to see the love story between Rock Hudson and Jane Wyman. They weren't going to see this visual film. So it's like that extra layer. But the thing I love about uh, Douglas Sirk's films is um, how subversive they are. Uh, people have this this vision of what the 1950s were is like this, um, you know, leave it the beaver, squeaky clean, you know, society of conformists. And his films, and along with the films of Nicholas Ray, uh, really got into the underbelly of U.S. life in the 1950s that people were afraid of um, talking about and then bringing it to the forefront. In this case, it's about a free spirit who's in love with a woman who is um, kind of just big into society and keeping up with the Joneses and being like everybody else. And he's trying to tell her that there's more to life than that. And um, really beautiful movie. Also a Christmas movie if you're looking for cool things to watch during Christmas. And I don't think I'm going to be able to get it back in, so I'm not going to. Um... Another one, good quarantine movie, uh, Great Gardens. Great documentary about isolation. <laughs> I don't want to get into it too far, too far but um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty messed up. I love it. Speaking of messed up, this is my favorite Robert Altman movie, Three Women. I often say that some of the most disturbing things I've ever seen in my entire life aren't from horror movies. You know, everybody thinks, you know, horror movies like genre films are like the coolest thing ever and they're so fucked up. This movie's more fucked up than most horror movies I've ever seen. Uh, stars Shelley Duvall and Sissy Spacek and they're both amazing in it and I just don't even want to tell you about it. Just, uh, just see it. It's, uh, their performances are amazing as always. And it's just, it's really disturbing and I love it. <laughs> I'm going to be saying I love it a lot cause I, I'm not good at talking off the cuff. Um, F for fake is cool. He's in the hole. Uh, night on earth is the film that got me into, uh, Jim Jarmusch films. Uh, it's a really cool, really cool anthology movie about taxi drivers all in one night. Um, I think five different stories. Each one takes place in a city around the world. Um, really cool movie. Um, let's see here. What else do I want to talk about? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of... Um, Nicholas Ray in the 1950s. Uh, here's a movie about drug addiction and mental illness in the 1950s. The horror behind closed doors. Again, when I say that there are movies more disturbing than the horror movies that you watch, this is one of them I'm talking about. Bigger Than Life, directed by Nicholas Ray, um, and starring James Mason, who's always fantastic. Great film. Uh, Red Desert. Tonioni. Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence, starring David Bowie. That's a really heartbreaking movie. Uh, not, it's, it's worth watching. Just, just see it. Um, Three Colors trilogy. Uh, it's David Lynch. Ah, I almost said David Lynch. <laughs> uh, David Lean uh, set. It's the uh, plays of Noel Coward, directed by David Lean. This one has Blythe Spirit in it, which is among my top three favorite David Lean movies. Um, it's a really cool ghost movie. If you're looking for something kind of lighthearted to put on around, I wouldn't even say Halloween, but I, I tend to watch it around Halloween. If you want like a good lighthearted, fun ghost movie. 
uh, Blythe Spirit. You can either buy it separately or this set, which I recommend the set because all of the movies in here are really cool. It also has a Brief Encounter, which is really good. But anyway, um, I think I'm going to cut this one off. I'm going to go through really quick again. That one you can barely see is Make Room, uh, Make Way for Tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, that other one you can barely see in the middle next to the last Metro is In the Realm of the Senses. That's a really fucked up movie. Um, that's about it. Anyway, uh, I'll go through the next shelf some other time.